Good morning all. These are my new favourite toys. I'm buying them like there's no tomorrow. Uh, you can see what this one is. It's a Wi-Fi switch module. And if you can't read that logo, you can read that one, which says Tuya. So these are IoT, Internet of Things, or Smart Home controllable modules. So let's take a look at some of them. So probably my favorite one at the moment is this. Let's take a look. Oh, it's an empty box, but the manual gives you a clue. It's a wireless temperature and humidity detector. Now this device is actually out in the shed at the moment, but we can still talk to it, look at it remotely. On my tablet, I have these apps. I've got the Lidl Home app because the initial Zigbee devices I bought, I bought from Lidl because they were very good value. Um, I've also got the Tuya Smart app, but I couldn't get this one to talk to some of the Lidl devices, and I don't really know why. I've got the Smart Life app, which is Volcano Technology or something, but these are all very, very similar. They're all Tuya based. Now I've also got the um, IKEA, I think it's Trotfrey, Trotfrey uh, app, in other words, the Trad Free. So that works with the Trad Free Smart Home Lidl stuff. Now that is entirely separate system, and I don't think there's much crossover, unless, of course, you use Home Assistant, where possibly there is the ability to read all these devices. But this requires that you set up a server, and I haven't quite got to that stage yet. So let's just run up the Lidl Home app and see what we can see. So here's my setup, Julian's home, and I've got two rooms, office, which is here, and modular shed. So if I go to modular shed, there's the gateway in the shed. There's the power strip, which I use to turn on and off the ant miners. And here is the temperature sensor. So let's click on that. And uh, there it is. You can see that the temperature is currently, that's interesting. Why is there no humidity indication? That's really weird. That's gone strange. I'm sure it's supposed to have both. But anyway, the, temp <laughs> the temperature in the shed is 22 degrees. Um, let's go to history because it gives you some graphs. Yeah, there are the graphs. Oh, they've gone a funny size. Oh, I think this has gone weird. Let me just reboot this app. Yeah, that was running in the background. Let's run it again and it might update and give us some proper information. Um, so I'll go straight to the temperature sensor. Right, that's more like it. 22 degrees out in the shed. The miners are running because they're profitable at the moment. 43% humidity. Uh, as I said, you've got those history things. They'll probably come up properly now. Yeah, the graphs had gone all big for some reason. Uh, so this was when I switched the miners on this morning. The temperature is going up. The humidity is falling down. But you can also set up notifications. Now I think if I go in here, make sure this doesn't give too much away. Um, tap and run and automation. So here are my automations. This one's inactive. This one is shed temperature less than 10 degrees, which isn't really useful. But this one is shed is warm over 30 degrees. And this one's active. And at the moment, all it does is if the shed goes over 30 degrees, and there were a couple of days recently where it did, it sends me a notification on my phone and on this tablet um, as well. So this is the temperature sensor. I've brought this in from the shed. It's saying uh, 22 degrees. That I'm sure will fall now. That doesn't pick up very well on the camera, does it? Is it a po Oh, it might be a polarization issue. Look, that's much better than that. That's interesting. And 61% humidity. Um, it's got a very nice always on LCD display. And if you rotate the back, you can see there's a little hook thing that fits in there, but that's screwed to the shed. Uh, you can see a couple of um, AAA batteries in there. And there's the reset and pairing switch there. Now here's an interesting thing. Zigbee, and this is a Zigbee device. I um, don't think it's written on that box. Did it say Zigbee on here? Oh, I think it did actually, yeah. Connection Zigbee, that's the box for that. Zigbee is a mesh network. So every device in the Zigbee network acts as a repeater. However, battery powered devices don't. 
because this device, because it's got a couple of AAs, which have to last a year or so, a couple of triple A's, this device is mostly in deep sleep. So this does not act as um, a gateway, as a mesh repeater, but all the mains powered devices do. Now, just going back to my um, automation, my notification uh, thing here, which says shed is warm over 30 degrees. You can see that what it is, is something from the temperature sensor. In fact, we could probably look at this, um, translates or creates a notification which goes out to your mobile device. Let's see if I can edit that. Yeah, so what we've got is condition, uh, a single condition has been met. This is an or or an and function because the other option is all conditions have been met or one condition has been met. So this is one condition out of a number has been met and this is all conditions out of a group have been met. So that's the and and that's the or function. Uh, this one is saying temperature greater than 30 degrees. I don't know why there are two decimal places there. That's really bizarre. Message center uh, on and the message is in there. Um, but here's the message name shed is warm over 30 degrees. You can color code it and you can set a, an effective period. So this runs all the time. Now to my mind, this notification must be written into this sensor's memory because this thing updates fairly infrequently because it has to try and protect the battery um, energy. So I think, but, but it does look at its own sensors, its temperature and humidity sensors reasonably frequently. But I think when you create one of these, it has to be actually written in here so that this knows if it goes over 30, not to wait two minutes, but to send that message immediately. That's what I'm sort of gathering from this system, but I am in a learning phase and I'm trying to understand how this entire system works. Okay, let's leave that there. And I just received this this morning and it is, and I've played with it briefly, but it's all reset now. Another temperature and humidity uh, sensor, a slightly prettier one. And on the eBay listing, it said more advanced model 2021 edition or something. So let's take off the back again, two triple A's. There's a little tab there, which I'll take out and that boots up. That's presumably a firmware version or something. And uh, yeah, this is saying something completely different, but I'm sure they'll both settle down to being the same data. And this is another Zigbee temperature and humidity display. So what I'll do with this one is show the process of uh, pairing this with the gateway so that um, its data appears on my tablet. This one has this very fetching stand. So let's click that on there. Yep, and then that clips on the back and then I can rotate the back into place. So that sits on its stand like that. So to pair this with, now this one's paired to the gateway outside. It probably can't talk to that at the moment because it's too far away. This one I'm going to pair with the internal gateway, my study gateway, the one that's in this room. So let's fire up the app on my tablet. Like so. And go to the study gateway, which is that one. And it has no devices. So we'll add a device. And it says, confirm the LED is flashing. So we'll make sure that the LED is flashing. I'll press and hold that. Has a little green LED in there, which doesn't come on very often. So that's flashing now. Press this. And now the gateway should look for devices search device and it should find this temperature and humidity sensor which i'll put like that so there it is one device has been successfully added now this tablet is on wi-fi so it's talking to my wi-fi network but the gateway is zigbee and found that by polling and this thing responded presumably and the little um, wireless symbol turns on now because it's paired with the gateway so that's done uh, we can alter the name of that, but I shan't bother. I'll just say done. And now I've got the temperature and humidity sensor. It does a little setup. I don't quite know what that's all about. And then 
it presents the interface for this temperature and humidity sensor. And that seems to tie up, uh, oh, not quite, 58% humidity. This is saying 59, 20.2 degrees Celsius. Now, what have we got down here? Um, temperature is comfortable, yeah. The air is also comfortable at that relative humidity. And this looks like it's some sort of graphing function, but I don't quite know how that works yet. Here are the smart options, so I can get it to alert me if it goes over or under a certain temperature. And here are some settings. Uh, now this is interesting because in the manual, it calls this radio receiver level, battery level. And they've also put that in this interface, battery level high. I think what they mean is radio level high, battery level 100% because it's got brand new batteries. And this low battery switch is, um, it will send an alert when the batteries in this device get low. Now I noticed this morning that this one uh, updates its display fairly regularly, but it doesn't update the app. And the app is some way behind this, presumably because it doesn't want to use the radio too much because that's going to use a lot of current from the battery. So quite how frequently that corresponds to that, I don't know. But as I say, if you set up an alert, my gut feeling is that that must set something up in here so that this can send that alert immediately. It recognizes that condition that you've set up. Definitely a better display on this new one because it doesn't seem to suffer from that polarization angle problem. Whereas this one clearly does. I don't quite, these letters, are, these numbers are a little bit spindly, aren't they? These are a bit thicker. Yeah, I think I like this one better. Now, I don't know whether this one had that slow update rate. I don't think I really was watching for that, but this one does seem very slow. Let's go back to the app and see where we are. Yeah, it's still saying 20.2 and 59, <laughs> and this has moved on, so interesting. Right, let's open another device, and that's this one. This is the Wi-Fi switch module. Now, this is also Tuya. The manufacturer is Mose, I believe, or the brand name is Mose. And this is a very tiny, and I've had this apart. I'll see if I can get it apart again, actually. Um, Wi-Fi 2 gang. Well, it says Wi-Fi plus RF. I don't quite know what it means by RF. Um, switch module. And in the manual, it explains that you put your switches into S1 and S2. So if you've got a double light switch, you'd wire them into S1 and S2. And then the lights you'd wire into L1 and L2, which is sort of live one, live two. Well, it might be light one, light two. And here are your live and neutral. And of course, that powers this unit up. Now, this isn't Zigbee, but if it were, and I think you can get Zigbee versions of this, then because this is mains power, this would act as um, a repeater in the mesh network. But this is Wi-Fi. And as far as I understand it, and I haven't really tested this yet, I will come back to this. Um, a Wi-Fi unit, of course, won't be able to log into your Wi-Fi network because it won't know the password and it won't know the SSID either. So the first thing you do to set these up is you turn on Bluetooth in the app and there's a Bluetooth communication to the Wi-Fi device to enable you to give it your Wi-Fi credentials so that it can then log into your Wi-Fi network. That's what I understand as being the, uh, the way this works. I'm just going to see if I can take this apart because there were some quite interesting things in here. Ah, uh, yes, using the plectrum, I have managed to break that apart. And there, and there we are. This is extremely compact because I think the idea of this is that it sits in the back of the back box behind your switch. It's all going to be a little bit tight. It's so that you can um, wireless control this and override with your uh, actual faceplate switches if you want. But the module in here is extremely tiny and something worried me slightly. I'll try and get that out. You can see from the front plate that this is rated at 10 amps for the relays. And in fact, on the relays, uh, it actually says 16 amps. But the connections to the relays, which are on these printed circuit boards, which are microscopically thin and then run down and are soldered onto this baseboard, 
they look worryingly like I wouldn't want to put 10 amps through them. But generally speaking, this is going to sit at the back of um, a light switch. And so you're not going to put 10 amps through most modern light bulbs. You wouldn't even put 10 amps through incandescent old style light bulbs, would you? So I think if you derate this hugely, then it's probably okay. Now here's the Wi-Fi module. Uh, it's got some stuff on there, but that's got a tin can on it. So that definitely looks like the Wi-Fi module. Is that a buzzer? A beeper? Yeah, I think that probably is a buzzer. Um, but there's a coily cable um, there. Oh, I think it's fairly well fixed in. Oh, actually, it looks like an inductor. Or at least it's soldered at both ends. So I'm not sure it's an antenna. But um, is that... I thought that was the RF part of this, Wi-Fi plus RF. But maybe it's not. Maybe that's an open air inductor or air cord inductor. Yeah, I thought that was an antenna for the RF, whatever the RF might be. But possibly the RF is Bluetooth, which may well be in the same module. Now, I haven't powered this up yet. I will do that. I'll probably do that in another video. But um, yeah, that's what this thing does. It's a Wi-Fi controllable uh, two gang relay controlled, obviously, switch. And I think the main usage is uh, as an override to your light switch. So let's put this thing back in its box. It is a very tight fit. But I suppose quite nicely made. Um, I suppose you could also sit this in the back of um, a mains outlet, um, a, a sort of ring main type outlet for controlling. Um, well, the danger with that is that these are 13 amp sockets in the UK and this is only rated at 10 amps. And I think you should probably derate this to about 5 amps. And so if someone put in a 3 bar electric fire, <laughs> I don't know anyone who's still got a 3 bar electric fire, but then yes. Perhaps this should be just um, left for putting in the back of light switch boxes. It does actually have this thing which sits around there and that looks like it's a DIN rail uh, sized thing. So it looks like that could sit on a DIN rail inside a consumer unit or something like that. Now this one's the one that probably interests me most at the moment. It is a smart meter. And this I got from Banggood. It was the only place I could find this unit. It wasn't on AliExpress, it wasn't on eBay. So yeah, Banggood is where I got it. And this is a double width consumer unit sized energy meter and monitor. Once again, it's Wi-Fi, um, 110 to 230 volts AC, but it also has a thumping great relay in it which is rated at 65 amps apparently there's a button on the front here so that's presumably used for pairing uh, wi-fi to your wi-fi network there are three lights here uh, as a wireless light there's a pulse light i think for well this one says it's 1600 impressions per kilowatt hour but i had i think i read somewhere that um you can set the number of uh, impressions per kilowatt hour and generally on meters it's a thousand uh, flashes of the red light per kilowatt hour so of course each one is a watt hour uh, there's an lcd on the front and by my understanding from reading this rather basic user manual you can put any parameter on here from voltage current uh, power level the power level that's traveling from the two live connections oh, i can't remember which is which now there's a thing here yeah, so live in is one, live out is two, which I believe are on the, uh, is that the bottom? Yeah, on the bottom. Lives are on the bottom. The two neutrals are on the top and they're bussed together. I have had this thing apart, actually. Um, but these two go into this monster relay, which I think internally is rated at 80 amps. Um, but I think this says it's rated for 65 amps. Um, this also can display accumulated kilowatt hours. It also can display whether the um, the power has been traveling in a forward or a reverse direction, which is interesting. That could be quite handy for the solar power system because that, of course, feeds solar energy into my mains rather than the other way around. 
So yeah, this looks very interesting. This two pin connector here, incidentally, ah, there's also these covers, which a cover the screws, because of course these screws will be live. Yeah. And little um, tie wrap points on there. This I understand is um, for the pulsing LED. You can put an LED on there. I don't know whether it drives the LED directly. It might do. I can't remember. I'd have to read the manual. And as I say, um, most meters are a thousand impressions per kilowatt hour. If you can set that internally, then of course you can have that pulsing at the normal meter rate. In fact, I've gone to this little manual because this is the list of things it can do. The impulses, uh, number of impulses per kilowatt hour, total energy, positive kilowatt hours and reverse kilowatt hours, real current, real voltage, real active power, real reactive power, power factor and the frequency in Hertz. And the reason I particularly wanted this is because you can link it in with the Tuya Smart Life app. Probably find that the little app will work just as well. The little app seems to be happy with these two temperature sensors. So you could set up smart scenarios where perhaps if the power level through this device went above a certain level, you might trigger something. Um, because this thing also has that relay, and we'll just check that in a moment, you could, conceivable, if, if you went over a certain power level, you could actually trigger the relay and it would act as a breaker and you could disconnect that circuit. Now the relay is on the live side between the live in and the live out. This is set to continuity. And what's interesting is that the relay appears to be normally closed because this isn't powered up. So I think this is a relay which when energized breaks the circuit. That's interesting. So my idea for this is to put it inside my new consumer unit because I've had a new consumer unit fitted uh, in addition to the old consumer unit. Uh, the old one isn't DIN rail and isn't this size compatible, but the new one is. And that has the solar power system in it. So I could monitor the amount of power coming from solar at any moment. It also has my external socket on it. So I could monitor the power going out to the shed, for example, and in the future, possibly monitor uh, the power going to an electric car charger but I just thought that was a really interesting device and so I'm probably going to do a video just on this where we strip it down then try and pair it and get it onto the app put some mains on it and try and get this relay to cut in and out but for the moment those are my Tuya IoT smart life or smart system uh, favorite devices. Now, I mean, of course, there are also light bulbs, but they don't particularly interest me. These light bulbs that you can make go white or or um, warm white and cold white, and some of them do different colors. These are the devices that really interest me in this arena of IoT and smart devices. Cheerio.